Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. Today we are checking out the house of Arus Ladore and it's one of their new ones, it's called Oud Luark. This one, I'm going to do a collaboration with my friend Oswald from the channel Mr. Oz. He is, in my humble opinion, one of the best fragrance reviews on YouTube. Really, really good nose, uh, in-depth reviews, very knowledgeable, has a, a huge collection of really incredible fragrances, uh, fantastic, great guy. If, you're, if you've not seen Mr. Oz's channel, please do subscribe and check him out. Uh, if you want really good reviews on niche fragrances, Mr. Oz is one of the handful that I really highly recommend to subscribe and check out. Uh, fantastic review. I'll hand it straight over to Oz to give you the note breakdown and to tell you his thoughts on the fragrance. Uh, I hope you enjoy. Uh, please do check him out, he's fantastic. Uh, take it away, Oz. Thank you, Peter, for this collaboration. I'm really excited to hear what you think about Oud Luwak. Quickly onto the notes. So top notes, we have coffee, luwak, sinking, Sumatra, agar wood, smoke, confusion. And in the heart notes, we have Maroc Noir, wood oil, spike nard, card seeds, nutmeg. And in the base note, we have Indian wood, Indonesian vetiver, absolute, cedar wood, and Sumatran benzoin. This time, Adam is focusing on a different wood profile, Maroc wood, which is different from the other previous wood-centric releases. And then this is a welcome change, something new, something exciting exciting to try. On my skin, Oud has two main stages. The first stage emphasizes the smoky, bitter, earthy facets of the Maroki Oud with the help of the coffee and the smoke infusion method that he used in this composition. Transitioning to the second stage, the emphasis is on smoother, more rounded woods, earthy tones along with dark herbal facets and a hint of a little bit of resinous sweetness that is coming from the vetiver, the spagnard, a little bit of cedar wood but with the benzoin. So more smoother facets during the second stage. So it goes from bolder, smoky, earthy and then bitter nuances or highlights to smoother highlights that are around uh, woody, slightly smooth, uh, earthy tones along with a dark herbal touch from the spike nard and then the vetiver and a little bit of sweetness, resonant sweetness from the benzoin. Beautiful contrast there between the first stage and the second stage. So on to specifics, Oud Luwak opens on my skin with a nutty, musky, dark, smoky, earthy, bitter coffee paired with balsamic smoky maruki oud and a brief hint of a resinous sweetness from the benzoin that is quickly pushed down or hidden in the background by the coffee that is just deep, rich and bitter. Now onto the coffee note that is the star player in the first stage. It's not going to be your diluted, watered down, sweet coffee that you're getting at Starbucks or Caribou. This is going to be a realistic, beautiful take on coffee beans. So if you make your coffee every morning like me, French press, and then you grind your coffee bean, dark roasted coffee beans every morning, that freshly grinded beans, deep, rich, smooth, uh, smoky, bitter, and earthy aroma that you smell when you freshly grind those coffee beans, that's what I get here. So realistic, well done, rich, and what better to pair it with than the Maroki Oud here with the balsamic smoky facets here. Beautiful composition on the first stage, beautiful pairing idea between the coffee and the Maroki Oud. Still on the first stage, underlying the coffee and Oud combo, I get a slightly clean motor oil feel. It's not in a bad way, but it's definitely there as a background note, but I definitely get there a oily feel, and I think it's coming from the Maroki Oud. Again, not in a bad way. Also helping with the fresh grinded coffee bean feel. I think it's coming from the nutmeg, adding that slightly fresh woody uh, peppery feel to it. So the main players in the first stage for the first two hours are gonna be your dark, deep, complex, earthy, smoky, bitter coffee paired with the balsamic, smoky Maroki Oud with hints of that oily, like motor oil type of feel in the background and then hints of that nutmeg in the background not really noticeable. Transitioning to the second stage, that's where the coffee backs off and almost disappears to the background only to give off more rounder and smoother edges to the fragrance or the Maroki Oud here as a support. So I get smooth woods, 
smooth earthy tones as well with a dark herbal facet in a vetiver and spikenard type of way so it's not going to be your leafy type of green or herbal feel here it's going to be an herbal feel that is a uh, dense dark and a vetiver and spikenard type of way along with that uh, since the coffee is now in the background I also get a uh, resinous sweetness from the benzoin that is much more noticeable and here and there when the clean uh, earthy vibes from the vetiver toned down I do get slightly grassy not totally green but grassy feel from the vetiver but it's not too pronounced to me in the a dry down is mostly about the benzoin resinous sweetness and then the slightly fainted smoky balsamic maroki oud there's a little bit of Indian oud but it's not that perceptible and then the supporting notes are the vetiver the dark herbal and then woody facets coming from the vetiver spike nard and then the cedar wood which adds a little bit of woodiness but not too perceptible is mostly about the sweet resinous benzoin and then the faintly smoked uh, maroki oud and much down the line it seems like there's a little bit of amber in here but it's not listed in the note breakdown one thing that I was looking for is the carrot seed notes that is listed in the note breakdown down but here I don't get it front and center to my nose when I'm trying the carrot seed oil what I'm getting out of it is a clean fatty woody type of smell paired with the faintly sweet boiled carrot feel to it here I don't get the boiled carrot feel to it mostly the fatty clean woods that is adding a rounding effect to the fragrance but it's not front and center I didn't pinpoint it per se in this fragrance it wasn't that noticeable overall this is a beautiful composition I'm Amazing contrast between the first stage and the second stage here if you love coffee you're not looking for that diluted sweet coffee you'll want authentic freshly grinded dark roasted coffee beans you're not gonna be disappointed with the first two hours if you're looking for a coffee note that lasts throughout you're gonna be disappointed after the two hour mark but because of how well done the coffee note is here again you're looking for that dark rich earthy smoky bitter freshly grinded coffee dark roasted coffee beans you're not going to be disappointed here now projection is average for the first two hours really good and after that it becomes dense and sits close to the skin it becomes more rounded and smoother um, a little bit of reserve after the first two hours but longevity is really good I get between six and seven hours of longevity here so overall I would say performance is good projection is low Although this appears less complex than his previous compositions, I would say this is a thumbs up for me. Great composition here. I'm excited to hear what you think of this one, Peter, so on to you. Hope you enjoyed that. Oz has a fantastic nose, so thank you so much, Oz, for, for being willing to come on the channel and to give your take on it. I really appreciate it. Uh, check him out. Uh, link is in the description if you haven't checked out Mr. Oz already. He's fantastic. So for me, when I first sprayed the fragrance, I immediately noticed the color of the juice. Um, you, you, it actually is like brown spots on your skin. It's very dark fragrance. The smell is, let me just spray it again just to remind myself, but it's, it's the opening is something. So, so the first thing I, I smell is a sweet resin. Um, and that lasts for like two seconds you get you get this wave of benzoin kind of sweet resin and then bang in comes the coffee <laughs> and oud so as uh, Oz says it's like a dark roasted coffee bean it's like authentic black coffee uh, and that's what you smell this dark roasted almost smoky coffee which is a very strong, very natural smelling as black smoky coffee. And you get a punch of oud. The oud isn't hugely animalic to me, which is good, um, but it definitely has an, a, a solid character. And there is a, a mixture of ouds in here. There is a rare wild oud from Papua New Guinea as well as a sinking Sumatra Argawood smoke infusion and Malake Noir Oud oil and Indian Oud. So that's, you know, a good combination of Oud there. I, I just smell something that is 
clearly oud, but it doesn't have barnyard aspects. It doesn't smell like a goat. It doesn't smell like a fruity oud. It's just this beautiful oudy woodiness. It's like the heart of the wood. And the, the term smoke infusion is, is a perfect term. It's possible that the smokiness isn't even coming from the coffee. It might be from the smoke infusion oud. Um, but that is a fantastic way of putting it. It's almost like you have dark coffee beans next to a, you know, a burner that is burning agarwood chips and you're getting the oud smoke fill up the room with this beautiful rich oudiness goodness. That's kind of what it gives to me in the first kind of hour of the fragrance is all about kind of oud and coffee. And yeah, then it transitions into uh, like Oz says that it kind of goes through a couple of phases. For me, I, I don't get the motor oil thing that Oswald gets. So there's, and there's a few nuances that Oz picks out on his skin that don't come out on, on mine. So like with any natural fragrance or fragrances that use, you know, a lot of high quality naturals, they, they do develop differently on different people's skins. Skin chemistry is, I, I feel amplified with more natural fragrances. I don't quite get the vetiver uh, in the dry down of this one. What I get in the dry down for me is more of the resin. Uh, the resin feels like the main kind of player to me and it makes everything very smooth and very soft, ever so slightly sweet with a kind of a dark woodiness, uh, which kind of feels to me like a mixture of the ouds and the cedarwood. But the vetiver on my skin is quite minimal. I don't directly detect too much of the vetiver. I just get a, a beautiful woodiness and a smooth coating of soft, slightly sweet resin. And that's kind of it really. That's the best way I can describe it for me personally. Um, it, to be honest, I love the opening. I think the, the coffee, the oud is a fantastic match and it smells really great. I, I find myself getting a little bit, losing interest a little bit in the dry down because it, I just get this kind of soft, woody, resonant, resin kind of feel. It, it loses a little bit of interest for me personally in the dry down, um, the, but the opening is top notch. I would say the longevity of my personal skin was five hours. Oswald got a little bit longer than me. And the projection was, again, kind of modest, like Oswald said in I would say within the first hour and then it sits closer to the skin and then around five hours, maybe six, um, it, it's kind of faded away. Really interesting fragrance. If you like coffee and oud, then check it out, obviously. <laughs> the coffee doesn't last the whole way through the fragrance like Oz says. Kind of within the first hour I'm getting the coffee and then it kind of fades into this more about resins with just the kind of the remnants of the kind of the dry down of the oud oils and maybe a little bit of the cedar but like I said I don't get too much of the vetiver or the other notes personally on my skin they don't come out too much. So the most interesting note about the fragrance that will get people talking is the Luwak coffee and I'll describe a little bit about what that is and the process of it. So the term Luwak is basically the the local name in Indonesia for the civet cat so civet, luwak, is the same animal. So so coffee, luwak, is coffee civet. Civet coffee, luwak coffee, it's the same thing. The biggest region that does this is Indonesia. Uh, they export it globally, it's even stocked in Harrods. It started originally by the luwak cats, the civet cats, um, sneaking into the coffee plantations and picking off the ripest coffee beans uh, from the buds. And the coffee beans are kind of like a, almost like a red berry with the coffee bean inside. They would take the ripest ones and eat them, um, but their body can only digest the, the outer shell of the coffee. It can't digest the coffee bean. It doesn't process it at all, really. So it passes it out, it basically poops out a lump of 
coffee, essentially, <laughs> that because of the way that the stomach acids and the animal kind of uh, mix with the coffee, alters the taste. I have never drunk it personally, so I can't describe what the taste is like, but it's meant to enhance the flavor and make it just taste a little bit extra special. Um, originally, this was a natural process and the, the Luark cats, the civet cats, were left as wild to go where they want and the pl plantation people would just pick it up and it was kind of a limited thing. That's not the case these days. So the situation with the civets in Indonesia in a lot of areas um, can be that they're not well looked after. There's a documentary by the BBC which you can find on YouTube for free if you want to watch that but it is a little bit distressing. A lot of them are battery farmed uh, and not well looked after and force fed coffee. It's not a great industry and I just wanted to highlight that in this video just so you're aware basically to advise people please don't go out and buy bags of Luwak coffee beans online on the internet. Just uh, be mindful of, you know, don't run run off and buy loads of Luwak coffee and add to the demand for it. Um, really is the only point I wanted to make there. Russian Adam is fortunate enough to actually live in the area. He lives in Indonesia and around Thailand and, you know, he's been in Southeast Asia a long time. But he's very ethically minded. He actually physically visited the farm where he purchased the coffee from and made sure they were well looked after in a in a nice area. The farm he chose has an absolutely massive outdoor enclosure that's 1,200 square meters and eight meters high. So it's a massive area for the civets and there's only five of them within the enclosure of mixed sexes. Uh, so well looked after, uh, not distressed. They're free to kind of eat what they like. Um, and the coffee beans then are uh, washed and purified and certified as, as halal. So with this perfume, you don't have to worry about the civets. They're, they're well looked after. They're from a, a really nice farm with a lot of, lot of space. And, you know, they're not abused. But just be aware, you know, I just don't want people to go off and buy bags of Luwak coffee beans online. Um, just because it does add to the problem that is, you know, beyond... Uh, you know the the farms that are well looked after you know there is a there is an industry there that's a little bit dark and i don't want to add to that problem so i just wanted to be conscientious of that and let people be aware of it but the adam is concerned about that himself and he made sure to to use a really good uh, farm that actually looks after them properly and and that's it that's my thoughts on the fragrance uh, it's probably <sighs> my favorite from the new collection without thinking too hard. I have a new appreciation for um, Baykal Gris. Didn't quite get it originally, but I, I, I think it's a very interesting fragrance and, and different. And I would say this one and that one are my two favorites from the collection. But my absolute favorite would be probably Oud Luwak. I really like the, the Oud note, especially in the opening half an hour, the Oud is beautiful you can tell it's natural oud you can tell it's quality uh, you can tell it's full of character and the coffee note is really nice and dark and smoky black coffee um, so yeah great I'm not sure I would purchase a full bottle myself personally I, I'm not sure that I would wear it enough um, but it's definitely my favorite from the new collection if you tried it let me know your thoughts thank you again to Mr. Oz for joining me and I'll see you all next time with another video take care Bye.